Um, Nari actually helped me, uh, his office helped me assign a fill out a provisional patent, so thank you, Nari. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy. Next up, we have Sean Savoyan. Um, Savoyan is uh, the vice president of a, and senior relationship manager at City National Bank. He uh, provides lines of credit for uh, commercial real estate, uh, equipment acquisition, uh, businesses, entrepreneurs, and all that stuff. He's also a used to be a commercial bank for JP Morgan Chase for quite some, quite some time. So um, with that, I want to introduce you to our next speaker, uh, Sean Savoyan. He'll be talking about financing. A round of applause for Sean. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Sean Savoyan, uh, commercial banker with City National Bank. Um, I'm here to talk about financing or raising equity for your startup business. Um, so I provide lines of credit, commercial real estate financing, equipment financing, or whether you're looking to do an acquisition, uh, all your cash management needs, which are your online banking, uh, commercial cards for companies that generate $10 million in annual revenue uh, sales up into the billions. Uh, so you're probably wondering why I'm here. Uh, throughout the 20 plus years that I've been doing this, I get uh, companies or entrepreneurs that come throughout through the banking way uh, into the banking system, and I need to help them navigate into different areas of the bank to try to help them get financing. So I'm here today to help you think about ways for your startup, whether you are wanting to start your own law firm, CPA firm, medical practice, dentistry, pharmacy, whatever that is. So the crude reality is, for a startup business, there's not any financing. Um, however, again, thinking of ways to try to navigate the system, to try to get ways of financing, is what I want to get you to think about today. Uh, one way is through community banks. Community banks. Sometimes they have programs for minorities, for startup businesses, whether you say you're in Glendale, Pasadena, wherever. For instance, you take Brand Boulevard here. You can go down, there's 10 banks right now in Brand. You can be creative and go into the bank, actually walk in, talk to the bankers, talk to the branch managers, and ask them, are there specific programs? Because banks try to come up with different ways, especially in the economy right now, that is, uh, we're doing well, in a nutshell. So when the economy is doing well, banks are lending. Now, they're a little more conservative because of the recession that we had in 08. However, they are still out. We're out there making loans. Uh, other ways to look at if the community bank way isn't working for you is say in the, um, it's called the SBA 7A program. So that's a way where the government and banks work together to finance businesses. Now, again, the reality is there's no startup financing. For example, I banked a company in the rail industry. They clean and repair uh, rail cars for Union Pacific, BNSF, all the large railroads, middle tier, lower tier. The CEO, not the owner, but the CEO recently left the company and said, you know, I've been in this industry for decades. She's got articles written about her. Um, she knows a lot about the industry. She said, you know what, Sean? I want to start doing this on my own. And with my background, I think I can get this done. So she put together a very extensive, sophisticated business plan. She 
She also, she also had uh, projections, financial projections, showing in year one specifically how she was going to make money in year one, year two, year three. She already had connections in the space. Well, I connected with my business partners because she came to me. I want to, I want to help. Uh, so I directed her to the space where they work with 7A. So uh, working with a manager in the group and a banker. So I stayed on to kind of help it through. So I listened to the conference calls. The bottom line was she couldn't get it. And the reason was is she wasn't generating any income. You have to show that you generate income to service the debt that you're looking for. Servicing the debt is the principal and interest, like on your home or, or whatever type of financing. I'm sure 90% of you here have, have dealt with that. So servicing it is making sure you can show that you generate the cash to pay off the loan. So there's other ways of thinking of trying to get this financing. We talked to her about, look, do you have another business? Say your parents, say your grandparents, say some type of relative that has a business, they might be willing to guarantee. It's, it's rare, but it happens. Um, if they do that, they can kind of bridge the gap for you. So what you want to get to is to show that you can make the money in the first 12 months. So in the, if you can show, okay, you're a startup and you made it through that first 12 months, you're making money, the banks can say, okay, some banks, not, uh, some banks will say, you know what, you've gotten to that first 12 months and now we'll give you X. We'll give you, it might not be exactly what you need, so you might think of ways to maybe not have as much in expenses. You get start to get creative in that way. Or you can look at um, finding equity. If you have friends, again, family, equity is basically somebody who's investing in your business or where they're going to expect a return. Sometimes you might get a gift from family. Again, I'm just trying to get you to think of ways because you're here for a reason, you're entrepreneurs, you have that spirit, you have ideas. Um, it shouldn't hinder you from doing what you want to do, what your idea is, is trying to get there. So thinking of ways to approach people, um, tell them, like the speakers before me were saying, Getting over that fear of talking to somebody about what you're doing. You, you might say, oh, they don't want to know about what I'm doing. Uh, well, you never know until you go start talking to the banks. And you get rejected. You get rejected, get rejected, rejected. Then the eighth bank says, you know, I know so-and-so who can help you out. Another way is Say you're already working for a corporation, for another <clears throat> practice, and you're generating income. Well, they might look at you in that way, where you're generating the income. Here you want to start your own business. You can look to the SBA 7A program, who can look at you and say, okay, well, they're already generating income. I can look at that. And then I can, and then whatever, it's tough, two, three days a week, you're doing this on the weekends or, or whatever, that can help bridge that gap for you. So thinking of ways. Uh, other ways are even hard money lenders, where a hard money lender is a lender of last resort. They charge you I'm just an arm and a leg. They charge you a lot of money, and they take a lot, and they take collateral. Um, but 
if you can get to a year and then release your liabilities and refinance after that first year, maybe it's not a year, maybe it's two years, but try to get to a point where you're, you're talking to people, you're building credibility, and then you're showing uh, that you're generating this income, that your tax returns or, or what have you. Um, another way is um, I guess I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop I'm gonna pause here and make it more interactive for questions. That way, I think you get more value out of it. I think I've given you guys some ideas and ways to think about raising capital for your own business. And so uh, I'm gonna ask the organizers to provide me with my information. Again, I'm not gonna make anything off of this. I don't get referral fees. I don't get anything out of it. I would just uh, help you, direct you to people in City National Bank, or uh, if I have any other sources, on, I'd be happy to help you. Uh, so I'll open it up for questions. I have a question. Sure. What's the typical coverage ratio that banks use? Typical coverage ratio. There's no typical amount. I'm going to pause for your question. There's another way that there, if you have. Can you repeat the question? Yes. What is the typical coverage ratio? Meaning, if you have. Sorry, it's all answered. Um, capital or cash generation of X and you have debt of X, if you have a one to one coverage, it's usually not enough for a bank. It's usually standard is 1.25%. That 0.25% that is a cushion for them. It's kind of a standard proxy. If you're a startup, they might ask for more. Great question. Uh, another way, uh, before I take other questions, is um, if you have a home, if you have commercial real estate, buildings, vacation home, industrial real estate, if you have a loan on it, you have equity, and let's say you need 200000 If you have 500000 in equity, that's a way to go to the bank and say, look, I have equity in my real estate. I would like to take out the HELOC, uh, which is a home equity line of credit or an industrial line of credit. That's a way to access capital. And it's a uh, usually, right now, rates are amazingly low, so it gives opportunities for entrepreneurs like you to get very low uh, interest rate financing. Hello? Hello? Okay. Uh, in regards to the rates, is there a standard or rough gauge of interest rates that you can tell us is good for us if we're looking? Um, you know, rates are extremely low for businesses, the system set up for businesses that are already running. Um, the lines of credit in my space are extremely low, less than 4%, less than 3%. Um, but for startups, they're going to be well above that. I, I can't tell you rates because for every business, for every industry, it's different. And you'll find um, ways, uh, like you'll get a rate, let's say, and what you want to get to is past that first year, show that you're generating the cash to service the debt, and then refi that. I mean, you could even go off a credit card. And say there's a, you have 100,000 limit. Uh, if you have the, if you can see that you can get past that time, you can use the credit card. Um, just different ways of thinking. You would recommend when it comes to that, in terms of like, if you're looking at a five thousand dollar piece of equipment, is it worth financing or just okay, put it on a credit card, and move on? What's, what's that threshold of like it starts to make more sense to finance equipment? Um, so in 
what context equipment, equipment financing, um, test, test equipment, manufacturing equipment, take your pick. So you're looking at just financing the equipment for your I'm basically starting a consulting company, and as a matter of fact, I can invest somewhere from five to fifteen thousand dollars in equipment, uh, just like really capital equipment. Um, but it's lots of small chunks. Is it worthwhile to finance, or is it? Well, you would weigh the options. I mean, you could say, okay, can I pay this with what I'm generating now? Is it going to take away from something else that I need to do? It depends on where you are in your growth pattern. Um, if it's a rate that's too high, then you think, you know, well, if I pay this rather than just paying it out of cash, uh, it's going to hurt me out of doing something else, then uh, you know, those are the ways to looking at it. Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Do you have more detail? I guess, uh, I guess one of the questions is what, what is the minimum loan you give out for that kind of stuff? Oh, I, a minimum loan for my stuff, I, it, uh, it would be about half a million. But again, I'm not the one that's going to give you that loan. It's going to be others within the bank that would uh, give those types of loans in that space. And uh, usually, it's at the branch level. Again, you, could, you could walk in the branches. And, and they can look at your business and say, okay, you're generating, you know, you have three years worth of tax returns, you're showing that you're generating income, you're looking for 5,000 in financing. I mean, that's not hard to do unless you're levered up, meaning you have a lot of debt on your books, and the bank says, you have a little too much debt, we can't go up to that high number. They, they try to do it say two times leverage, whether it's your balance sheet or your, uh, they're not going to look at funded debt to even uh, for companies that size, but they'll look at your, your, uh, uh, your balance sheet leverage at that point. So 5,000, it's usually not difficult to get if you're a company of, uh, of size. We have a question. Hi, Sean. Um, do you have a prediction for 2020 uh, when it comes to interest rates and fund availability? Like, if a business wants to refinance, do you think it's you know going to be more or less favorable to refinance in six months or a year versus now? I can't predict. Um, pretty much forbidden from predicting. However, we have to look at the market right now. Um, the Fed just lower rates, rates are at close to historic lows. The economy is doing well, but they don't want to teeter with it. So to look at 2020 with rate increases, I don't see it. Um, but maybe a drop, I don't know. But uh, recently the Fed has said that they're just looking to pause. 2020 looks to be a really good year for low financing rates. I can't tell you how the economy is going to do. The economy is looking good. The jobs report came out yesterday, and it was really an excellent reading, uh, beating economists' expectations, which it's been doing for the last few years. But uh, rates, you can expect rates to be very low and a good time to, to refi in all types of uh, loans. Thank you. If the economy gets bad, does the coverage ratio change for banks? When the economy, the question is, okay. uh, if the economy gets bad, does the coverage ratio, or do, you, do the banks get more stricter uh, when it comes to lending? They do. They get stricter when the economy changes for the worse. They get their, their risk appetite goes down. They they get scared. Uh, our job is to try to get them not to be scared. To say that your company is doing well enough, it shows, the numbers show it, the management shows it, uh, and uh, if, it, if, if you have a banker that can help you navigate, uh, you get what you're looking for or something else. So 
I guess you would say it, when you're considering your financing, you should also consider the coverage ratio. So rates might be good when the economy's bad, but the coverage ratio is going to be higher, so you might not be able to refinance. It just depends on uh, what your coverage is. Your coverage based on what level of debt you have. So in a, in a, in a slowing economy, the coverage ratio you can expect to be higher. Uh, in a better economy, you could expect that they'll, they'll be more. I mean, they're not do. Banks are not crazy right now. Uh, in 08, on the mortgage side, they were. Um, and frankly, if I, something came across my desk with the the numbers, with the cash flows, the stated income, and you know, you're you're trying to sell a portfolio, I wouldn't even touch it. Uh, those things are not happening right now. It would be a different. Uh, way of slowing than, than previously. Do we have time? We're out of time. Um, I'll be here during the lunch period till about uh, 1 o'clock. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy. And they'll mail out to you my contact information.